because it was confounded with nuclear war at the very beginning, at the origin, it's still confounded by many people with nuclear war, and it, they don't correlate. The, the bomb and the en nuclear energy are similar, but they're not the same at all. They're not different, different processes. So in a sense, we lost a tremendous scientific breakthrough if we had continued. And uh, uh, Bongiorno over at MIT agrees with me, agrees with us, and he says, you know, if we had continued on the path that Eisenhower and John Kennedy had started on in the 60s and the 50s, we would have been there by now. We would have had more than 100 uh, nuclear, 200, 300, 400 reactors, or, and other people around the world would have built, and it would have worked. There would have been accidents, yes, and there would have been people who died, but that any industry, the plane industry, any uh, chemical industry, have had tremendous accidents along the way. That's the evolution of a business, of an industry. The point is that we got scared off in America, and America had these, uh, Russia had the biggest accident. America didn't really have accidents. They had hysteria, we yeah. feel, and that hysteria led to the closing down of the, of the industry, which was a shame because the France went ahead, but I, I think France is a wonderful example, but they, they were not remarked upon enough. They were a smaller country, so to speak. Russia did well. China is is doing extraordinarily well. Even India has gotten involved in the game, although it's got a long way to go. So Germany, is, Germany is closing its plants, right? Uh, and Germany started well. They had twenty some plants in Japan, seventies, and then you know what they've done. It's an act of blindness and suicide and stupidity. Their economies in the shit. It's dropped. Their economy has fallen off completely, and it will fall further. It's a, an act of blind willfulness, uh, in a sense, to close down this Promethean fire that, sort of, that was available to them. And it's still available to everybody still. And I, it's, to me, it's a historical tragedy, which will be looked upon if we do survive as a planet. And I think we will, because I'm optimistic. If we do survive there, we'll look back on this era and say, what did these people do? Had an, an answer, and they didn't forge ahead with it. They, they pulled back. Not everybody. Thank God the United States is not the only country in the world. As I said, Russia kept going, and they're still going, and China, uh, or, and France, and Sweden, to some degree, had kept going, and now more countries are getting involved. And so this is coming back. It's not over yet. But nuclear industry, nuclear energy was counted out for dead, let's be honest, in, in the world. And when you go to Davos, which we did, and you go around, they, uh, Davos is committed to the future. They talk about it. We go over there. They don't even have it on the agenda. Nuclear yeah. energy has been moved off to the side and forgotten about like it's some kind of aberration. That is shocking to me. As a guy I'd, I'd been, like... Yeah. If I could ask you, uh, you mentioned the fear of nuclear war being confounded with nuclear power. We're seeing, I'm, I'm sitting at the United Nations right now uh, in our studio, and just this week, the director of the International Atomic Energy Agency was here warning of possible radiation leaks if the situation in Ukraine uh, at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant isn't dealt with. Um, and to be fair, the main risk seems to be if power is lost uh, to the facility that the rods could overheat and release material. And, and I'm wondering um, how dangerous, uh, you know, could, could a nuclear plant withstand a war? Maybe Usur, that's a question for you. Um, but I think more for our audience, are you worried that the threat of, or this conflict maybe will have a negative impact on how people look at nuclear power and maybe bring back those old fears. Of course it will, because people don't think uh, beyond the, they don't, they see the danger and they react to that. Uh, the scientists I've talked to, and I can only talk, I'm not an expert as I say, but the, the plant in Ukraine has been, four or five of the reactors have been turned off, I've been told. It's not, I mean, it has, it has happened. There was an explosion at Chernobyl in Ukraine. And we saw the result of it. The radiation leaked all over the place. There was no containment structure. And the Russian government at that time lied about it. And the worst that happened was that radiation got out into all over Northern Europe. And 
according to the UN and the World Health Organization, you know, some 4,000 might have died of cancer. We, we can't pinpoint it. And since then, there's been another group that went back in there and they just said that there's not even that much who died. So, I mean, aside from the hysteria that gets around, think about the Fukushima incident. Radiation leaked. People were checked out in Japan. Not one Japanese citizen died from radiation poisoning that we know of. Everyone, the, the 18,000 people that died, died from the tsunami and the earthquake, which was horrible. There was a bad, worse earthquake that Japan ever had. So nuclear has a pretty good, pretty good reputation for standing up against these adversities that happen. And yeah, uh, even, even I, the kind of current situation with the Zasephora uh, plant in uh, Ukraine, um, um, nuclear uh, plants are hardened uh, structures and they're, you know, in fact, much easier to kind of protect against these kind of attacks than uh, other structures, other industrial sites in general. If you think about in New York, um, the planes that attacked 9-11, uh, uh, the World Trade Center, actually flew over the Indian Point nuclear site before wow. they came and attacked the, uh, the World Trade Center. And they didn't, uh, they could have gone to the nuclear power plant, but they didn't because that wouldn't have had the, if, you're, if your goal is to maximize the number of casualties and create the most kind of um, impact, uh, uh, that's as much, there are many other structures that you can attack that have more impact. So for instance, if Putin wanted to kill a large number of Ukrainians by attacking an industrial site, there are many to choose from. Uh, in fact, uh, 14,000 people have already died in the in the Ukraine war so far. And we are not like by kind of fixating on the nuclear, the potential risk of nuclear, uh, we are kind of ignoring the lives that have been lost, real humans that have actually died in this war. So war happens to be much worse, whereas nuclear rarely ever kills anybody. War most always does. What yeah. you make of uh, the intention of the EU to impose sanctions on Russian nuclear energy, if, if you want to get political. Well, it's a stupid mistake. Uh, the Russians have done a tremendously important job for the world. We should be all partners in this. We should not be at war. I pray for peace. Uh, the China, Russia, the United States are there's, uh, this are in a potential partnership for, for removing carbon dioxide from the from the atmosphere and that would work. The Russians have done a lot of good. They've exported their, their the biggest export industry as far as I know and they're building in uh, turnkey plants in other other countries uh, mostly in Eurasia and Arabic countries and uh, Turkey. They've done a great job of it. They're very good engineers. They have 200,000 people working at Rosatom. I mean, they take this very seriously. They are a real major government agency backing nuclear energy, which we don't quite have in this country. Did we you, have the- How long did it take you to get into Russia to get access to Chernobyl and, and officials there? Well, Was that uh, difficult? Did uh, you get everywhere you wanted to go? I did a film in 2016, Snowden. And part of, uh, part of making that film, I went over there. And uh, I've been to Russia many times back from the 1980s. I was in Ukraine, actually, as a tourist. But uh, over time, I've spent time there, and I got to know Gorbachev well. And because of the Snowden affair, I got to know Putin because I got to. I wanted to ask him, "Why did you give? You know, what happened on your side of the story?" And I got his side in the movie, which I hope you see because it's very interesting what he says in the documentary I did, Putin interviews. You've got to hear the other side. You can't just jump to this conclusions spawned by the Western press. Uh, it's fascinating. We got not only to Chernobyl, but we went to the new, the Belyarsk, uh, laboratory, uh, the Be Belyarsk reactor, which is a, perhaps the most modern in the world. Uh, so uh, as, as you mentioned, Kristen, thanks again, thanks for having me. Uh, as you mentioned, Indian Point was about 12% of statewide electricity generation was the largest uh, energy producer in the state. And it was uh, responsible for about a quarter of New York City, uh, downstate New York electricity, and about 80% of downstate New York's carbon free electricity, which is a huge chunk. And it doesn't, uh, it's not a surprise that when you shut any uh, carbon free energy source down, 
be it hydro, be it nuclear, or destroy all the solar panels on the state, that incremental demand is met by the only generation source that can expand at will, which is uh, fossil combustion. So in New York State, our electricity sector, fossil combustion for our electricity sector increased by a third due to the closure of Indian Point. 